let's look at the factor tree for 45. So I can put 45 in a box and we'll look at the factors of 45 and the smallest uh, factor I can think of, well two doesn't work but three does so I'll put three here and I'm going to put three in a circle and then what would this be? So three times 15 is 45 so three and 15 here and then 15 can be factored as three and five. Okay, so these numbers that I have in circles right here, these are called prime numbers. So prime numbers are the ones in the circles and the ones in the boxes here. Those are called composite numbers. So let me write that here. And so the reason uh, we have a difference between prime and composite is in whether or not we can break them down any further. In other words, 45 can be broken down into 3 and 15. But 3, well, we just stop at 3. We don't have anything else. And that's because of the definition of a prime number. A prime number is an integer greater than 1 that has as its only positive divisors 1 and the number itself. In other words, the only things that divide 3 would be the number 1 and the number 3. And the only things that divide 5 would be the number 1 and the number 5. Well, if we look at 45, 3 and 15 both divide 45, as well as 1 and 45, and maybe some other things. So you can see that these are the composite ones. They can be broken down further, while these are the prime ones. They can't be broken down any further. We look at another example here. How about if we look at 60? So for 60, I can put that in a box like this. So 60 can be broken down, and we can break it down as a 2, which I'll put in a circle here, that's a prime, and then a 30. 2 times 30 is 60. The 30 can be broken down. I can use the 2 again here, and 15. 2 times 15 is 30, and 15 can be broken down. We saw that over here, 3 and 5. So 3 and 5. So these numbers here, are all, the ones in the circles here, are all the prime numbers that uh, happen when we look at the uh, factor tree for 60. And then 60, 30, and 15, those numbers would be called composite. So a prime number is an integer greater than one. So that means that one itself is not a prime number. And if we look at the prime factorization of a number, that just means that we're going to write the given number as a product of primes. So 45, for instance, can be rewritten as 3 times 3 times 5, or 3 squared times 5. This is the prime factorization of 45. 60 can be rewritten as 2 times 2 times 3 times 5, or 2 squared times 3 times 5. This is the prime factorization of 60. So right here we have a list of the first 30 prime numbers. So remember, 1 does not count as a prime number. And uh, if you notice here, we see the common ones in the beginning, 2 and 3, 5 and 7. Uh, 9, for instance, would not be a prime number because 3 times 3 is 9. Uh, and then they start to uh, grow pretty quickly as you, as you get to higher and higher prime numbers. Um, so for the kinds of problems that you will probably be working on, you don't need to know all of these prime numbers. It's best to just kind of know the, the early ones and use those to try and find the prime factorization. So let's look at an example. What if we wanted the prime factorization of 650? Well, you might think, okay, 650 is a big number. How would I know how to write that in, uh, in terms of primes? Well, we're going to do a factor tree, and that's how you always do these prime factorizations is by starting with a factor tree, because factor trees can help to break it down into manageable parts. Like, for instance, 650, well, we see that that's an even number, and even numbers are always divisible by 2, so I can always start with a 2 here. And if we look at this, 650 divided by 2, that's 325. 
and 325 goes in a box here and that can be broken down now I see that it has here uh, a 5 at the end that means it's divisible by 5 so I can put the 5 here and then this will be 65 5 times 65 is 325 and 65 is also divisible by 5 if we see we have a number ending in 5 so I can put the 5 here and I can put 13 here that's what uh, this ends up being 13 gets a circle because if you look over here 13 is a prime number so now to write the prime factorization of 650 I just look at all of the things that are in the circles here so I have a 2 a 5 a 5 and a 13 so that's 2 times 5 times 5 times 13 but you don't normally write it like that if you have any repeats usually you use exponents so I would say 2 times and then instead of 5 times 5 I would write 5 squared and then 13. And that's the prime factorization of 650. Uh, let's look at another example. Let's look at the prime factorization of 3,382. Okay, this is a really big number. That's okay. We're going to start by putting 3,382 inside of a box here. And if you need to use a calculator for some of the larger numbers, that's fine. Uh, this is an even number, so we know it's divisible by 2. So what goes here? Well, it turns out that this is 1,691, if you divide that in half, okay? 1,691. So here's where it gets tricky. So what you might do is start by looking at the early numbers here. 2, well, it's not even, so 2 is not going gonna, is not gonna to work. And then on the calculator, you could try all these other ones. In other words, try 1,691 divided by 3. And do you, does that work? Do you, do you get an even or a, uh, a whole number? Uh, and you don't, so you move on. Five, well, we can tell this doesn't end in a zero or a five here, so that's not going to work. Seven doesn't work. Eleven doesn't work. Thirteen doesn't work. Seventeen doesn't work. Eventually, you get to nineteen, and you realize nineteen does work. And so this is going to be a little bit of trial and error here. And nineteen times eighty-nine is 1,691. Now if you look at the chart over here of the first 30 primes, 89 is also prime. So we're done. That's it. So the, fa the prime factorization of 3,382 is going to be 2 times 19 times 89. So that one was kind of a tricky one. It was not obvious uh, that we would have these when you have the larger primes. Those ones can be a little bit tricky, but uh, if you need to, use the chart of prime numbers uh, and use a calculator to help you figure out uh, if things will work or not. Let's look at one more example. How about the prime factorization of 4510? Okay, so 4510 can go in a box. Put that in a box right here. And let's see, well, uh, it's, it is even, so I can divide it in half. And if I do that, I get 2,255 when I divide it. So 2 times 2,255 is 4,510. Now this number here is not even, uh, but it is divisible by 5. I see it ends in a 5 here, so I can do that. So I have 5, and then this is 451. And I'll put that in a box here. And let's see, 451. So this is another one where you might have to go through the list and try them out. Uh, it turns out that 11 ends up working here, so 11, and then you're left with 41, and if we look at the chart over here, 41 is a prime number, so we're done. So I can say that the prime factorization of 4,510 is 2 times 5 times 11 times 41. Now it turns out that the prime factorization of a number is unique, except for the order of the factors. What that means is there's only one way to do it. In other words, 4,510 written as a product of prime numbers will always be a product of these four numbers right here. You can move the order around, but it will always be just these four numbers.